Hi there, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes of this rational function of x divided by x squared minus 9. So first thing is let's focus on the domain. So whenever you're thinking about what's the domain of a function, all you have to do is think about are there any values of x that if I plug it into this function will give a wacky result? So it turns out you can do this three kind of step analysis. Analyze the numerator, analyze the denominator, and then analyze the overall function. There's no limit uh, in terms of what value you can plug in the numerator, right? It's just x. So there's no restriction. Then I go to the denominator. Is there any restriction uh, when I plug in any number here and square it? No, you can square any number, right? Positive, negative, zero, it doesn't matter. And it could be as big as you want, right? Subtracting 9 from it doesn't do anything either. So just by looking at the denominator alone tells me that there's no restrictions. However, when I look at a fraction overall, there is an issue. I do know that I cannot divide anything by 0. What's 2 divided by 0? Don't say 0. I don't know what it is. It's undefined, right? So what, you, what we realize is that the domain of this function cannot involve or cannot be a value of x that produces an overall value of 0 for this denominator. In other words, what we can do is we can take this denominator and set it equal to 0 and solve. So we have x squared being equal to a positive 9. Taking the square root of both sides, right, would have left me now with x being equal to plus and minus 3, right, whenever you take that square root, okay? You have both a positive 3 and a negative 3. And, I mean, there is uh, kind of some debate about this, but, in, in you know, if you were to take negative 3 and square it, right, if you were to go backwards, you would get positive 9. And if you were to take positive 3 and go backwards and square it, you would also get positive 9. So you kind of have two answers here, all right? Now, the domain, therefore, cannot involve the values of plus and negative 3. So what you can do is you can write something like this, the domain. The domain is going to be all real numbers, all real numbers, except for positive 3 and negative 3. And if you need to write that, you know, in interval notation or whatever notation, you know, go for it. But that's the idea, all right? That's the domain. Now, the next thing we're going to do is then focus on the uh, vertical asymptotes, all right? Vertical asymptotes. Now, these uh, vertical asymptotes are going to be then the locations or the values of x that give an overall undefined result to the function. It's like, well, wait a minute. Isn't that kind of what we did for domain? Well, yes, it turned out to be the same type of analysis. Remember, domain is much more general. I'm thinking about what values of x, numerator and denominator, uh, give me a potentially give me a wacky result, right? That don't make sense. But when you're looking at vertical asymptotes, you're only focusing on that denominator. Okay, I don't, I, I don't care what the numerator is going to do. Um, so the vertical the the uh, vertical asymptotes here, um, we set this thing equal to zero and we solve it, and we actually already did this. Okay, now this could be these could be now the values of x that give an overall uh, or excuse me, these are the values of x that give an overall value of 0 for the function. However, both of these might not be vertical asymptotes. You have to, depending upon the function you're given, you have to have everything in fully factored form. Now, there's nothing to factor in the numerator. It's just x. So there's nothing to really cancel. All right. So I should be expecting to have now, in my, for my vertical asymptotes, I should be expecting to have both of these. All right. In other words, I would have x being plus 3 and x being minus 3. All right, let's see if that's true. Go to your calculator, type, go to y equals. Now plug in your function. Do x divided by then, parenthesis, x squared, x squared, uh, minus 9. And close the parenthesis and hit graph. So do you see now how we have two vertical asymptotes? That's what we expected. Okay, that's what we expected to kind of have. Now, um, let's move on to then horizontal asymptotes. So horizontal asymptotes now, so I'll write it over here, horizontal asymptotes. What you need to do now is you need to consider what happens to the overall function when the x values become extreme, okay? So the first thing that would be, and you have x now both in the numerator and the denominator. So really you have to first determine whether this thing's top heavy, equally heavy, 
or bottom heavy, bottom heavy. Okay. Now, um, in this, this example, this is an example of a bottom heavy function. In other words, what you're going to do is you're going to locate the values of X in the numerator, locate the values of X in the denominator, and you're going to tell, or you're going to, you're going to determine, you don't have to tell me, you could just determine it. Um, you're going to determine then which side has the higher power of X. So since the higher power of X is in the denominator, we call this bottom heavy. If this were X squared, that would be equally heavy. And if this were X cubed, that would have been top heavy. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Now it turns out whenever you have a bottom heavy function, you're always going to have a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. You can memorize that. But the idea is this, that you want to find the limit, okay, of this function. You want to find this function's value when x goes to infinity. So when x becomes really, 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 really large, okay, infinitely large, what happens to the value of the denominator overall? Well, it becomes infinitely large, right? If you take infinity, well, and then you square it on top of that, and then you subtract nine from it, it's still infinity. Okay, so you have a denominator that is huge. It's infinitely large. And what you have is a, also, you have an infinite now numerator, but you have infinity squared down here, and infinity squared is bigger than infinity, all right? Which is kind of a strange idea, but there's plenty of videos out there to try and explain that odd concept. So the denominator will become bigger faster than the numerator will. And this thing basically will go to then zero. Okay. Because you're going to have a bigger number on the bottom than on the top. If you think about how that would play out over time. Okay. Over time. So the Y value is equal to zero and that's now known as the horizontal asymptote. So now if we analyze this particular graph over here, right, let's see if everything we said is working out to be kind of true. Well, we said, we just said that we have a horizontal asymptote here. Notice, right? Horizontal asymptote at y, y equaling zero. And we have two vertical asymptotes roughly around, not roughly, but exactly at x equals three and x equals minus three. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank you so very much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Thanks for all the support as well. Um, we'd love to help you with more problems. We have thousands of videos out there, literally thousands, not only in math, but chemistry and physics as well. We always have a lot of stuff coming. We have a lot of stuff in the works too. And we're going to post when we update stuff, we're going to post things in the description, all right, uh, of the videos. So always check that out because we're going to have a lot of stuff that you can use for free. All right. We really want to help you out as much as we possibly can, uh, through your course. All right. Thank you very much, and I look forward to helping with more. Take care.